Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County, and this show is about Plymouth County real estate. Our headline for the month was Typical Winter Blues Hit the Real Estate Market in February. This show is taped in March, but we're reporting on the February numbers for the Registry of Deeds. I have a great guest, Christine Richards, our Information System Administrator, who will be talking about some of the changes at the Registry in our training session. So let's go right to the numbers. Uh, the number of deeds recorded at the Plymouth County Registry for February was kind of slow. 538 deeds recorded in February, less than the 572 in January, just about the same as last February. But for the first two months in calendar year 19, sales of property are down 11%. Uh, as far as mortgages go, we had a little bump in mortgages based upon the rates being low for a period of time and some people uh, refinance. There were 1,145 mortgages recorded in February, more than the 1098 in January, but down 16% compared to last February. For the first two months of the year, mortgage recordings are down 16%. We have good stories to tell about foreclosures. Many people remember the difficulties we had from the meltdown in 2008 and going forward when a lot of people lost their homes. A foreclosure deed is when somebody has lost their home, usually for non-payment. There were only 24 foreclosure deeds recorded in February, less than the 35 in January, 33% less than last February, and for the first two months of calendar year 19, 36% less than last year. Uh, it foreclosure notices, which is a document a person will receive that show they're facing difficulty paying their mortgage. If someone's facing that situation, don't wait. Make sure you reach out to a federal housing counselor to try to modify your loan. Um, we had 41 foreclosure notices in February, less than the 69 in January. And for the first two months of the year, they're down 36%. The next image you're going to see is of all the communities in Plymouth County, Abington through Whitman, the number of foreclosure deeds per community in orders of notice. In Plymouth and Brockton have always been the higher numbers and continue to be, uh, although there are foreclosure issues throughout um, Plymouth County. Uh, just quickly, a couple of things to note. We're now e electronically recording documents in lien court. Basically, lawyers can uh, process those documents through their offices now. Our, our training room is um, going to be up and running again on Thursday, April 4th. We're going to talk about that a little bit with my next guest on segment two. And uh, Christine Richards, who was our information system administrator, We'll be talking about technology in training classes in segment two. Thank you. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This segment of the show, we always try to do something educational. We've had title examiners, commercial real estate brokers, surveyors, appraisers, a lot of realtors uh, who pretty much are right on what's happening out in the market. And I have a great guest this segment, a guest who's been here before, Christine Richards, who is our Information Systems Administrator. Welcome, Christine. Thank you Welcome for having me. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. So um, first, uh, why don't you give our viewers a little bit of background about yourself, how you ended up at the registry? Um, well, actually, I, I started out at um, Bank of Boston when okay. I was um, yeah, very young and had my oldest child and started with the, the registry because it was close to home. So I started when I was um, 24 and I've been with the registry for 27 years. I started out in microfilming and worked my way up and as, as the registry began um, using computers and adding all of their information to, um, to the computer system, then I grew with, with the technology. Well, clearly what we're going to talk about today are, are a couple of projects related to people being able to search 
for records. Um, and the world has changed since the development of the internet. And I always said that we want to get everything available at the registry that is there in a hard copy available for anybody searching our records from anywhere in the world, which is what the internet allows you to do. And, and that is exactly what we have done. Um, when I started at the registry, we were just starting scanning. And just recently we have, um, well, within the last few years, we've gotten everything online. We have just recently um, indexed everything back to book number one. So everything is indexed back to so book let's, one. So let's talk about that in, sure. in a little more detail. Sure. Uh, we just finished a couple months ago a project that goes back to book one, page one of the Plymouth County records. Uh, Plymouth County was founded in 1685 when Bristol, Barnstable, and Plymouth County were split up into three different districts from the original Plymouth Colony. So those records go back to, I believe, August 1686? Yes. So when you go and search our site, you will see not only the image of, of the document, but index information about it. And that is the project that we all uh, completed. And your department was very involved in, along with an outsourced company that did that. Yep, we worked, to, we worked very hard on, on getting that. We went back to August 6th of, of 1686. Um, and you're able to search. Governor Bradford, uh, Robert Barker, I think was document number one, was book, of, book one, page one, and you're able to search his name and you will find that image. Great. So um, that is something that I know that a lot of uh, realtors, attorneys, and genealogists will find very important as they go forward if they want to go back beyond the 50 year title search which was all that was required at one point, all the way back to the beginning of time in, in Plymouth County. They can now go online. You want to describe how people would do a search for that? Sure. Um, they would go on to um, our website, titleview.org slash Plymouth Deeds. Um, they can start right there on the home page. Allows them to put a name in. And you would put in the last name, space first name, and click search. Um, you can click on the advanced tab if you would like to narrow it down by date, document type, and um, town, and bring up your search result. You can do a search that way. It enables you also to um, sort. Once you have a search result, you can sort. But you can view the image right from there. It's really very intuitive. And, and before your segment's over, we're going to talk about training opportunities that we offer people yes, to do. absolutely. So, so the next uh, project I wanted to talk about, which is still a work in progress, I mentioned that Plymouth County was founded from Plymouth Colony when it was divided into three counties in 1685. But prior to that, and certainly some of the earliest land records in America relative to transition from common ownership to private property rights began in Plymouth Colony. And that Plymouth Colony project, as I mentioned, is a work in progress, but they're going to take um, the original Plymouth Colony records. And that's the one in the handwriting of William Bradford, book one, page one of the colony records that basically laid out uh, where people located on what they call the street back mm -hmm. at that time, currently known and changed over in the 1800s to what is called Leiden Street, named after Leiden in Holland, where the uh, colonists had lived for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but it takes you from that original land record all the way to the Plymouth County records. Book one, page one, right, which are one. the right. right. So those are those known as the Plymouth Colony records. Right. Um, we're going. Those are also going to be available on our on our website mm -hmm. and online, and they'll be available with an index as well. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to go online and and do a search 
by name and view those images as well. Yeah. So, I, so that basically will have a continuum from 1620s, early 1620s, yeah. all the way to present, that you could search every single transaction, theoretically, anything that was recorded from 1620 to currently in 2019. To today. Yeah. And view the image. Right. And view the image as well, which is, which is the key. So view image, the image and indexing information. Right. So then let's, let's talk about our other project, which is also customer service oriented, um, the transcription project. So the transcription project, so it's, it's great having the images online. It's great having, showing the images and, and how they were and how they were, how they were shown back in 1686. But they're done in, they're written in Old English, and they're very, very difficult to read if you're not used to reading that type of um, script. So what we're doing, in, and what we're, we're also outsourcing, um, is we're having them transcribed into typed documents. So each letter, each line, each page will be transcribed into type so that the layperson can go on and they'll be able to look at the typed image, but they'll also be able to toggle. So they'll be able to look at the typed and they'll be able to look at the handwritten side by side. Yeah, clearly, a lot of people recognize that uh, there's not a lot of training going on for students uh, in even writing right. things in cursive. Right. Uh, and those original land records are beautiful pieces of art, some of the writing that they did back in that era was very uh, beautiful, uh, very hard to read, because uh, some of the language even isn't what we use today. Right. But, but the changing of that and being able to see the original cursive handwritten document and being able to pull up the transcription is going to be very uh, fascinating, and particularly when you go back because it's going to start book one, page one, of the county records. Go back to 1686, it's going to be quite a thing. It will be. It'll be fascinating. And from uh, on my standpoint, I've been assisting in helping them to, you know, look at different different words and and figure them out. And and it's been it's been a learning curve for me as well. Yeah. And some of the um, title examiners that were serving many, many years, the private individuals that do title searches for lenders um, knew that better than people do today. There was right. a woman in particular that's recently retired and moved up to live with her daughter up in Maine uh, by the name of Marilyn Dupuy, yeah, Dupuy, who was an expert in deciphering that handwritten document. But there aren't a lot of people now that have the ability to do that because they don't stay with it every day right. like people like her that had been there for 50 years had done and and she was she had to she had to read it right. she had to know what it said and um, so so this is going to be a service that we provide that that really we need to do it as soon as possible because the people who are able to to read it right. are are dwindling and, and retiring and, and retiring and dropping and, away right, right. So let's talk about um, our training classes that we offer. Sure. Because all, all of those three uh, recent and ongoing accomplishments will provide a lot of resources, additional resources to people uh, going working from their computer or if they come into one of our three offices, Plymouth, Brockton, or Rockland. But uh, there's, there's a great benefit to your class in that you are able to train them in a uh, very uh, expeditious manner and of how to research uh, documents, plans, and all those kinds of things that they may not be able to do as efficiently as they do after you train them in your course. Quite sure. honestly, we've had hundreds of people go through the training course, uh, historical-oriented uh, people, uh, society representatives from the various historical societies, historical commissions, and many, many municipal employees that use our records for their own jobs with 
uh, one of our 27 communities. And I know you've done a great job doing that. Oh, thank People you. are always uh, thankful for the, the training opportunity and you uh, basically teach them uh, how to do their job more efficiently or do their historical search more efficiently. And I think we're gonna have a lot more of that as we get into next year's um, season, uh, the yeah. 2020 400th anniversary right. of Plymouth Colony. Right. So, yeah, yeah, so what I, and thank you very much. Um, and what, what I do is this actually started out just as a training session for our assessors to help them look, look everything up on our, on our website. Um, and it's really evolved into, every, and this is available to anybody who, can, who would like to come in. It's free of charge. It's a very small class. Um, we, have a, we have a total of nine people, um, nine available slots. Uh, we make it available on a monthly basis. It's the first Thursday of every month. Um, and what I do is I, I train people on how to look everything up as efficiently and quickly as possible, but also integrating in how to use the registry, not just how to use it online, but how to use it overall. And we talk about document types, we talk about grantor, grantee, and really how, how the registry functions. Um, and what I wanted to kind of put a plug in for is um, the realtors would really be able to benefit from this. Um, when the realtors perform you know, their realty function for their clients, um, some of what they're doing is they're running into some problems at closing or just before closing and they're finding a discharge hasn't been, hasn't been released. And these are things that they, in a quick, very quick search, when they, do, when they get the listing, they could just go on and say, oh yeah, it's all, it's all free and clear. It, it's not to replace a title search, but just to do a cursory search, just to do a cursory look. Um, so one of the things we were able to do, we, we were able to get some statewide technology money and build out our own training room. As you mentioned, there are nine stations. So um, in addition to your spot that you do your training from, there are nine hands-on uh, computers that they work from yep. in hands-on training, which I think is pretty um, un unbelievable opportunity for people and they yep. feel so confident when they leave. Sometimes they'll come in and have a rudimentary uh, idea of how to, how to do the search, but um, I'm gonna have you go through step-by-step step a little bit what you, what you do, but it's been such a great uh, thing with a lot of great feedback. Yeah, and the, the people that come in aren't just assessors, aren't just municipalities, aren't just uh, you know paralegals or or, um, or realtors, but it's people who want to do a search on their home. Mm -hmm. They want to search it all the way back. Um, but what we what we really try to do is when they when people come in, we start with each of our indexes and how, how each index works and what the book and page is, is all about and when you look at your deed, how to look up your deed and how to do your search, how to search your home all the way back to, for, you know, back to 1686, mm -hmm. um, how to search the ownership. And, and that's, the, that's what people, people, some people just want to do, do that. They just want to see. Yeah, so one of the things we did in the room in addition to the tables and the seats and the computers is put on the wall, uh, different versions of how technology has changed the world uh, from way back into the early colonial records when the Jenny gristmill, John Jenny was granted the authority to build a gristmill instead of everybody individually grinding up their corn with a little piece of stone, uh, they allowed him the right to use the power of the river, the town river, to set up a grist mill, and people would bring their corn to him, yep. and with that grist mill, which is still, a, a replica was still in operation at that site, would grind the corn for them, saving them all that time and aggravation, and he kept what was called a pottle of the corn. He had paid, not in money, but he got paid back and in corn. corn that he ground up. Uh, that was a change in technology that saved people a lot of time and allowed them to do other things 
like farming or whatever they were doing at the time with their lives. We have uh, something from the original development of the Toll House cookie. Yeah. Ruth Graves Wait, Wakefield was fooling around one day baking cookies and put some chocolate morsels in it, and voila, uh, came the development of the chocolate chip cookie, Toll House cookie. Uh, the Fezzidin Tower, the tower when they had the first uh, transatlantic broadcast across the ocean, yep. uh, you know, a change in technology that began allowing people to hear music uh, all over the world, uh, and uh, you know, uh, things like that, that uh, development of the Catches Mitt by Billy McGonigal, um, and, and other things like that. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that, that when I bring, to, that I bring to that class is, I started with the technology of imaging and, and indexing and, and the com whole computers, and I've, I've, I've grown with it and um, grown up with it. So it's, and we have a technology um, display out in our lobby mm -hmm. that shows the recording, the, the, the development, history of, of recording, the history yeah. of recording from the quill pen. Surveyors, the quill pen. Yep, yep, all the way up. Um, yeah. And, and I've, I actually entered, you know, halfway through and used many of those, those technologies. So when we ended the last slide or the last, um, location of the history of recording. We, we talked about electronic recording for recorded land documents. Yeah. And a picture of the first one accepted at the Red Sea, that was probably close to 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And what we ended up with on that particular display section was, and this change in technology will not be the last. And since then, we've done electronic recording on land court. We're doing all these technology projects that we just talked about. And you know, there's a lot of things out there on the horizon that people want to do with GIS connections, connecting lien records to the actual properties and connecting the tax records to that, the assessments to the same thing. So we know that there are software companies out there working every day to try to bring, bring added value to what we do right. in our records, and we know that'll happen down the, in the future. Down the road, there's so much more that we can do, and, and there's so much more we'd like to do. Yeah. Um, that you know, we'll we'll continue we'll continue doing more, and and if there's more that that people would like to see on our website, we encourage them to contact us. Yeah, and I and I always say anybody like I do with the training sessions, yeah. anybody that has suggestions of what we should be offering call you or me at the registry. Our website is PlymouthDeeds.org, and they, they can reach us, and if they have a particular uh, thing that we have in our possession that should be made more available or easily, more easily available on our search site, on our website, we'll certainly do that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, great, covered a lot of ground. Welcome back to the Registers Report. Again, my name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. I want to thank Christine Richards for the great presentation she did on some of our upgrades to our technology and resources that are now available to anybody searching our records, as well as her discussion about our training opportunities. They're all free. Take advantage of them if you choose. Uh, in this month of March, we talk about some of the holidays for March. Uh, Fat Tuesday was March 5th. Ash Wednesday was the sixth. Daylight savings time, uh, the clock sprung ahead, was on the 10th. St. Patrick's Day was the 17th. Uh, the spring equinox is the 20th, which is today, the vernal equinox when spring begins. And now we're gonna talk about a couple of our notable land records for the month. First of all, uh, the Strand Theater. Strand Theater is something that is recognized every year in Brockton. Uh, 13 firefighters were killed fighting a fire at the Strand Theater in 1941. Um, the roof collapsed on them when they went in to put out the fire. And there's a event held every year 
uh, by the Brockton Firefighters and the Brockton Firefighters Union that celebrates and recognizes those people that gave their lives as well as it's an event just to honor first responders. Uh, there is a memorial out in City Hall Plaza dedicated in 2008, ad adjacent to the site of the Strand Theater. It's the third largest loss of life in our country from a fire and certainly something that we want to continue to honor. Uh, the next uh, notable rent land record we're going to talk about in the spirit of St. Patrick's Day. Uh, thanks to PAC TV, they put a little green light behind us. I wore my St. Patrick's Day tie. But John Boyle O'Reilly was a very famous Irish writer and poet. He lived in the town of Hull. He was a, in the army in England, and he was convicted of Irish tendencies, sentenced to death. That was community was sent to Australia, where he escaped and came to America became the editor of the pilot, the Catholic Church's uh, newsletter. And um, he basically uh, had a summer home, lived in Boston, but had a summer home in Hull, which has since been turned into, and is today, the Hull Public Library. Uh, next land record uh, is Anna Buckley. Anna Buckley was a woman from Brockton. Uh, worked for a number of offices at the state level, uh, then was elected the first woman to the Brockton City Council. She rose to state senator and rose to vice chairwoman of the Ways and Means Committee. She was very uh, interested in her Irish heritage, and she has did a lot of things for her district, which extended from Brockton to Norwell, uh, so much so that her support for Massasoit Community College resulted in the Massasoit Performing Arts Center being named the Senator Anna Buckley Fine Arts Center. And next is one of our colonial records. It is a colonial record that uh, shows how many people came to the colony as indentured servants. They would sign a contract they would have their voyage paid by the person bringing them over, who gave them a place to live, fed them, gave them drink, and they worked for a period of time, usually four to seven years. Uh, in this particular document, it was a transfer of the rights for the indentured servant contract with the agreement of the indentured servant. And it's kind of a fascinating way of looking how when people couldn't afford to come over here on their own, it was a vehicle to do that. So I want to thank PAC TV for helping me share information about our, our real estate, which for most people is their most valuable asset. Uh, Lorna Green Baker and Christine Richards from my office helped me put this show together. David Antoine and Ben Alexander and Keith Hughes helped me put this show together. So I hope you had a great St. Patrick's Day. Uh, continue to celebrate it through the month of March. And happy spring. And we'll see you next month.